Hello there. We have been talking about the different types of environmental pollution and today we will be talking about a type of pollution which remains localized for a long period of time that is the soil pollution. So unlike its counterparts where, like air or water pollution, here the pollutants don't get dispersed, they don't spread out. Wherever the pollutants are deposited, they remain there for a very long period of time. What do we call as soil pollution? When there is presence of toxic chemicals in the soil in high concentrations, which poses a risk to the human health or to the ecosystem, that is when we call that soil as polluted. And how we have been doing in the for the other types of pollution, in the same way, we will be looking at the causes, the effects and some of the control measures of soil pollution. So let us start with the causes of soil. The major cause of soil pollution across the world is the use of agrochemicals. Agrochemicals are chemicals that we use in agriculture. So this could mean insecticides, pesticides, fertilizers, fungicides, herbicides, all of these when they are used in the chemical form, they get deposited in the soil over a long period of time and that causes a major environmental disaster. It can even affect the health of the people who are working in that field or who are staying nearby. So examples of this include the use of DDT or the use of endosulfan, which was banned in Kerala for uh, I think in 2005. So these are all examples of chemicals which have been used beneficially in agriculture. However, they are causing pollution to the soil. So these are the major cause of soil pollution. The next cause of soil pollution are industrial wastes like waste from the mining industry or from manufacturing units when the wastes are dumped into the soil. That is again an example or that is a pollutant which is adding to the soil. We have even domestic waste, for example, leakage from the septic systems or leakage from the underground tanks or pipes or dumping of garbage like you can see over here, sewage effluents if they are being emptied into the soil, detergents which are being emptied into the soil or even you can see here in the landfills when a large amount of waste is being stored, the inside the landfill within the garbage there is a lot of reaction happening and there is a water coming out of it which is called as the leachate. This leachate gets into the soil, it gets absorbed into the soil and then again causes soil pollution. So these are all some of the domestic wastes which are causing soil pollution. Lastly, we have electronic waste that is e-waste. These are the non-biodegradable substances which are having a high content of lead or cadmium arsenic. For example, our cell phones or any other electronic gadget that constitutes the electronic waste. So these are the different types of soil pollutants or this is where the soil pollutants are getting in into the soil. The effects of soil pollution can be on either the soil, it can affect the soil directly that is it is affecting the environment in various forms or it can affect the human health. When we see the soil fertility there is definitely a loss of soil fertility. The reason being these pollutants start accumulating in the soil and they degrade the quality of the soil. So over a period of time, the plants are unable to grow over there and that leads to a loss of soil fertility. When I say plants are unable to grow, it means even the fauna gets affected. The animals, the insects, the plant species, all of it, the biodiversity of that entire region reduces because of the soil presence of the soil pollutants. We also have eutrophication which is seen in the nearby aquatic bodies. We had discussed about this in our previous lecture as well. Eutrophication is when a particular water body gets enriched with nutrients. So all the nutrients which are there in the soil here may not stay within the soil. At times there could be a rain that comes in and along with the rain the pollutants, the nutrients from the soil enter into the aquatic body, into the lake or into a pool that is nearby. Now the problem is those aquatic bodies then retain that particular chemical and then there is algal bloom over there and you have a lot of toxins that are getting deposited over there so that is what is called as eutrophication. Eutrophication is you can say like a side effect of soil pollution. So not only does the soil get polluted but even the nearby aquatic bodies take the brunt of it. When we see the human health, now human health gets affected due to biomagnification. So this is one example wherein endosulfan which is an insecticide now it is being phased out globally but it became a highly controversial chemical in agriculture because it was very very effective in agriculture to kill the insects but it was extremely toxic and due to the phenomenon of bioaccumulation it was causing a lot of you know endocrine dysfunction in the people around that region. For example in Kerala over a period of 20 years endosulfan which was being sprayed in the cashew estates of Kasargod district in Kerala 
over a period of time people realized that it was causing severe health hazards and severe deaths were being caused even in the people who were surviving there was a lot of disorder dysfunction in their endocrine system there were mental ailments there were physical ailments cancer occurrences were more so due to this endosulfan was banned in kerala in 2005 and then it was banned in india in 2011 and it is also being removed phased out you know in the process of getting phased out globally so that is one example of a chemical which may be useful in the field but it is causing a lot of harm to the environment to the people around due to the process of bioaccumulation and biomagnification it can also co contaminate the groundwater so when the groundwater gets contaminated and people take that groundwater for drinking purposes then again it can affect the human health so human health can also be affected acutely affected by soil pollution coming to the control measures the best way to control soil pollution is to shift from the chemical fertilizers or the from the agrochemicals to organic options like bio pesticides or bio fertilizers so if we go for reduction of the usage of chemicals in the field that will definitely help in controlling soil pollution in the future so using organic options using compost using bio pesticides that is microorganisms that kill the pests or using microorganisms and plant waste as fertilizers in the soil all of these are examples of safer options eco friendly options in place of chemicals treatment of effluents is also very very important because the effluents should not be directly emptied into the soil it needs to be made sure that industries are treating their effluents or even the domestic setups are treating their effluents before discharging it into the soil there has to be segregation of waste so that the biodegradable wastes can be used by microorganisms for production of biogas and we can recycle and reduce the total amount of waste so that landfills do not get you know they do not increase in number there is not too much of waste getting dumped into the landfills because that is where the soil pollution starts so to avoid that we can segregate the waste ensure that only waste that cannot be recycled or reused goes into the landfill these are some of the control measures of the soil pollution so as we have seen the causes the major effects of soil pollution on the environment and human health and some of the control measures of soil pollution i hope this class was useful to all of you and i do hope to see you all in the next lecture as well thank you